Hi, Dr. J here from our Ask Dr. J segment. This time, we're going to talk about exams and re-exams. Often patients come in and say, why do I need an exam? I know what's wrong. The problem's right here. Here's where it hurts. Just fix this. It's not that simple. Just because it hurts there doesn't tell us why it hurts there. The problem could be coming from over here or over there. We don't want to just chase the pain around. We want to find out what's causing the pain. So. Even if you had an exam with another um, doctor, your primary care provider or an orthopedist or whatever, we need to do an exam because we do really thorough movement exams. I don't think you'll find anyone who takes the time to spend with you on an exam like we do at Cornerstone. First, we begin with the anamnesis, which is the patient's account of their health history. You're going to tell us all about the history of this problem. First, the chief complaint. Why are you here? What can we do for you? How can we help you? Uh, you'll say something like, it's my shoulder, and we're gonna say, okay, how long has it been hurting? What kind of pain is it? Where exactly in the shoulder is it, etc." Uh, we wanna find out how long you've had it. Like, is, is this something you've had for years and it's on and off, or is it consistent? Um, we'll go after that into your personal health history not just about the, the problem itself, but about what other illnesses and injuries have you had? Um, what other symptoms you might have had, even though it hurts here, is it hurting anywhere else or any other symptoms? Uh, what medications you're on? Uh, what allergies you might have? From there, we'll move on to your family history. We're looking for genetic risks of certain diseases. Uh, for example, rheumatoid arthritis is a good one for us to know about because if you have a family history of rheumatoid arthritis, we wanna make sure you don't have it either because if you do, there's certain techniques that we don't want to do with you. Uh, we're concerned about, mostly about your parents, your siblings, and your children for your family history. We want to screen for anxiety and depression, and we want to check a, what we call a review of systems, your respiratory system, your GI system, just to see whether there's any other factors that could be playing into your problem that might not seem obvious, but could be participatory. From there, we want to get into your, the big goals. What do you want to do that you can't do right now? Identifying your big goals helps us stay on the same page and it helps keep you, the patient, motivated to stick with your treatment plan. Um, techniques that we'll ask you to do at home that you might not want to do because the exercises might be boring or challenging, but we want you to keep your big goals in mind to do things like, let's say you want to be able to drive for six hours without back pain or having to pull over to get out of the car and walk around. We want to give you a sense of accomplishment when you've met your big goals, especially when your pain has shifted elsewhere. You might feel frustrated that you're not making progress because you have the pain somewhere else, but let's say yes, but the big goal right here has been met. You now can drive your car all day long without that back pain. We might have a new problem here. It might not even be a new problem. It's just one that you couldn't feel because the big problem was in the way. You couldn't really feel the pain in your shoulder because your back was hurting so bad. Next, we want to check your vital signs. This is really more the exam itself. We're gonna check your temperature, your blood pressure, and you're gonna tell us, that this information will tell us about your general health overall and helps us find some, whether, it helps us find any problems that might be playing into your problem that you're coming in for. Next, we want to proceed to a neurological exam. This tells us how well your brain and your spinal cord are talking with the rest of your body and if there are any disruptions in the flow of communication between those. We want to start with some deep tendon reflexes. That's the where you've seen on TV and movies where we hit you with a hammer and the knee kicks. Uh, that's what it should do. If it doesn't kick or if it doesn't move much at all, it could be a sign that there's a pinch somewhere that's interrupting the flow of communication. We want to move on to strength tests. Again, if you're weak, especially on one side but not the other, in a certain muscle, that tells us that there's a little inhibition in the flow of communication between the rest of your body and your central nervous system, your spinal cord, your brain. 
We also would want to check how well you could feel your, these sensory tests. We want to compare your left and right sides, so make sure that they are giving equal amounts of information. And if need, we'll even do some neurodynamic sensitivity tests. These are a little bit more advanced, uh, especially if you're having uh, nervy pain. We want to do some advanced tests to see what parts of your, usually your spinal cord, are involved in, for example, sciatica. So those will be advanced tests for nervy pain. Um, an orthopedic exam will do that assesses your musculoskeletal system, especially the joints and bones, uh, checking to see whether there might be any stuck joints or arthritis in the certain joints. Finally, we'll end with our GRIP exam. GRIP is our own proprietary system of examination. This assesses how well you can move specific joints of your body in specific directions. Uh, this part of the exam is what I call the Simon Says portion of the exam. I'm, when we ask you to move in certain directions and certain ranges of motion, where you have uh, vectors of deficit where you can't move very well in multiple directions where those directions meet that's usually where the problem is so we want to address that specifically with our exams uh, after an exam we'll set up a course of treatment we'll treat you and ultimately re-examine you a few weeks later we'll repeat the exam compare that the results to that to the first exam to see how well you're progressing whether we need to make any adjustments in your treatment or whether we compare backbone treatment as you recover, your chiropractor may decrease the frequency or duration of your visits and you might, as I said, become aware of new problems that have been masked by your initial ones. You might also have new goals that you want to accomplish. Now that you can sit for eight hours, maybe you want to sit for a cross-country trip, who knows? We could help you with that. I'm Dr. J from Cornerstone Health. Thank you.